بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دی اونلی ڈفرینس بٹوین آرڈنری اینڈ ایکسٹرا آرڈنری از دیٹ ٹیٹل ایکسٹرا وین جولیا سیزر واز ریٹرننگ وکٹوریسلی فرام ون آف ہز کیمپینس ہی ہیڈ ون پرابلم دی کنڈیشن آف روم واز دیٹ ہی مسٹ ریٹرن ود آؤٹ ہز آرمی اینڈ وین ہی واز ریٹرننگ ود ہز آرمی دیر واز اے ریور روبیکان ان فرنٹ آف ہم ہی ہیڈ ٹو ٹیک ڈیسیجن whether to cross that rubicon with his army or to cross it he had to take a decision he crossed the rubicon with his army and then he overtook the government over the period of time crossing the rubicon took the form of an idiom which means taking a decision when there is no point of return so far as the individual life is concerned there comes such times when a person has to take those decisions which are not only difficult but when there is no point of return so one such decision was also taken by one of our students sara khalil she is from batch 40 the online one and when she decided to cross that rubicon that we shall discuss in this interview assalam alaikum sara wa alaikum assalam and then tell us how did you cross the rubicon thank you for the introduction sir it was really beautiful I started my journey back in 2019 after I had just graduated from FAST uh, in, with a degree in business administration and I appeared in CSS 2020 for my first attempt. However, I wasn't able to qualify the essay part, which is why I appeared again in CSS 2021 and fortunately Allah has been very kind to me and this time I did qualify. So uh, my journey has also been a very long one. Okay, so uh, Sara, tell me, there is always an inspiration. Yes. And when it comes to girls, either this is an inspiration of his father or mother. Yes. What was your inspiration in this journey? Sir, in this journey, my inspiration was uh, my grandfather, my mother, and my father. Uh, I have with me these books that I brought uh, to show that during my preparation phase, I had these three right next to my study table and I would look at them whenever times would get a little difficult. For instance, uh, this was the book that my mother purchased when, um, when, she w- when she wanted to prepare for CSS. And then these two books were purchased by my grandfather. As you can see, they're very old books and um, this, uh, this book was published in Lucknow, while this book came in the West Pakistan era. And these three books have kept me going when times got tough, when it was difficult to move on. I would just look at these books and I would just be inspired all over again. So for me, the inspiration was very tangible. Uh, my mother and my grandfather are, my grandfather is a retired professor. My mother is uh, currently serving as an associate professor. And uh, yes, I've been very lucky. Okay, so I believe that it is more or less uh, a legacy to you. Yes. And that was a dream achieved after, uh, I believe, so many generations. Yes, yes exactly. So it is not your, I believe, uh, a solo flight or a solo journey. Yeah. You have the legacy of all those uh, people that, are, yes, that yes, were behind exactly, you. Exactly. So it's very good to know and it's very unique for me as well because she has brought all those books <laughs> in this interview, which is first time in my life. And... Uh, Here she is. So congratulations Thank once you. again. And Thank you so uh, congratulations to your uh, forefathers and obviously parents as well. Thank uh, if they hadn't uh, got these books, yes. I believe the journey would have been a little longer. Yes. Yes. Okay, so it's really very surprising for me. <laughs> okay, you. moving on towards our next uh, questions. Yes. Okay, you told us that you have graduated from FAST and yes, it was, I believe, a BS in Accounting and Finance? Uh, no, sorry, sir. It was a Bachelor's in Business Administration. Okay, right. So your optionals were? Sir, my optionals were International Relations, Gender Studies, Business Administration, Sociology and Criminology. Okay, so I can understand that business administration has something to do with your degree. Yes, sir. But so far as criminology, so what were your priorities while selecting those optionals? So were they based on the scoring trends or uh, the one that is your strength in your uh, educational career? Sir, uh, for me, picking uh, the optional subject was a matter of uh, what, what are my strengths and what I have an aptitude for. For instance, I picked criminology because I have an aptitude in studying uh, criminology and 
because uh, I feel like I, I perform better in social sciences subjects. I can write lengthy answers. I can see the world from a theoretical perspective. And criminology has always been an interesting subject for me because I've already always um, been very interested in studying the criminal mind. So okay. uh, that's why I picked for that subject. So my technique in picking these optional subjects was based on uh, my academic aptitude and my interest because CS is a very, very long journey and you have to pick subjects that would complement your journey. Um, I picked international relations because it would complement current affairs, it would complement um, my essay and other subjects. Gender studies because I was always interested in and still am interested in the uh, concept of gender and feminism and sociology because it helps you study the society that you're in at a very large level and uh, business administration again because I had a background in it which is why it really facilitated me in the, this time. Okay, so your parents are from the social sciences background, so more specifically the uh, language section. My father is uh, from a banking background and he is currently working uh, in Sindh Bank and my mother is from a languages background. So uh, I had a mix of both growing up. Okay, right. So why didn't you opt your studies in language? So why did you go for the business administration? Any specific reasons? Yes. Uh, Again, I picked business administration because it was something that I had an aptitude for, even though uh, my, uh, my, grandfather, uh, my grandfather's subject was history and my mother's subject currently is English literature and languages. I went for business studies because I feel like I have more of an aptitude for studying uh, at that time. I had more of an aptitude for studying uh, marketing. Uh, finance and all of these subjects and business administration makes you this sort of a jack of all trades, master of none. You get to study all of these different subjects, both analytical and theoretical. So it helps you tackle any subject, any field. So a business student can perform exceptionally in the corporate sector. They can start their own businesses. They can excel in CSS. The possibilities are endless. So this, this particular, um, field for me was, uh, was, was, has been very um, beneficial. So I believe it's a very good news for all those business graduates yes. who want to excel in competitive exams yes, as definitely. well. You have briefed them very well. Definitely. So I believe that would serve as a motivation as well. Yes. So moving further, Sarah, tell me, how did you organize your day during your preparation? So were you also doing some job or you were involved in full-time studies? Um, I was involved in full-time studies, even though after graduation, I had an ample amount of opportunities being a business graduate. Uh, I decided to, um, I started, decided to invest all of my time in, in my studying. Uh, there's an, there's a saying in business called high risk, high return. So I did uh, take a big risk of not going towards the corporate sector right away. I I spent my time studying and my day would be divided into sections. Uh, I had uh, I knew that I had to study at least eight to nine hours a day for a consistent amount of months. So what I would do is uh, there is the study technique called the Pomodoro study technique. In Pomodoro study technique, you divide an hour into chunks. So Pomodoro uh, was basically drafted by this Italian scientist. So in this technique, what you do is that you focus 50 minutes on one specific subject and then you take a 10 minute break. So I would divide the entire day into eight Pomodoro chunks and then I would study for 50 minutes, take a break for 10 minutes and then I would split the subjects into those chunks, which is why the study technique that I took was very, um, it was very facilitative I can, I, and it was very long term. So that's how I used to divide my day. I would pick one difficult subject and one optional subject to complement it. And uh, so I and the, and I would follow the plan that I had already made. Okay, so were, uh, there were those times when you were just exhausted with your studies yes. and you were looking for some uh, relaxation for your mind. Yes. So how did you manage your other activities uh, besides studies? 
Luckily, I have always been an introvert, so um, social uh, social gatherings, uh, avoiding them wasn't like a big challenge for me. And especially uh, while I was preparing for CSS 2021, there was a global pandemic going on, which gave us students uh, a, a lot of time to sit in one room and study. However, I would... Uh, when it came to like spending breaks, uh, what I would do is that I would watch uh, these videos on YouTube, specifically Al, Jaz Al Jazeera's channel. Uh, there's this series called Start Here. It's very interesting. Hassan Minaj has a very good show on uh, political commentary and uh, BBC, uh, Vox, uh, Vice. There are a lot of channels out there on YouTube. So I made sure that even the time that I was uh, not studying, was going productive because I was watching these other shows on YouTube and Netflix and making sure that I have a holistic grip on the subjects that I was studying. And that would eventually help me in my uh, competitive exams. Okay, Sarah, tell me, when uh, you were joining our academy, yes. what expectations were in your mind? So were they based on the concept of smart study that most of the uh, academies promote? Or were you expecting the same hard work, the same toil uh, that you had been through? So what were your expectations? Uh, smart study is something that I have uh, different views on. Um, I know CSS is not something that can be accomplished in a day. It takes a long, long time and it takes a lot of toil, a lot of hard work. And when I came to this academy, I had the expectation of studying from one of the best English faculty. And uh, I wanted someone to properly guide me on what an essay is, on what pressy is, even though I've been fortunate that my mother does guide me. But when it comes to competitive exams, there's something else. So uh, when it, in my time in this academy, uh, when we were when we just started off our lectures, we were studying introduction in the same class and then we would practice that introduction and then get it checked in the same class. So a lot of constant evaluation was going on. And because of this constant evaluation and constantly um, and timely feedback, were, was I able to qualify essay this time around? And that was my expectation and it did got filled. Okay, Sarah, your subjects are based on your strength and aptitude. Yes. Most of the students, they opt history. Yes. Uh, you have neither opted history uh, nor any of the languages. So is there any specific reason? I didn't go for a history subject because I felt like I could score a lot better in the subjects that I picked just because I had an aptitude for it. For instance, I knew that um, I wasn't good. I knew my weaknesses. Uh, nobody's perfect in this entire preparation process and you have to know yourself. So I knew that I the dates and the names weren't really my strengths, which is why I, I capitalized on my strengths, which was business, which was criminology, which was sociology and gen because these subjects, these social sciences subjects, they don't, they see the world from a theoretical perspective and they give you a lot of different angles. I felt like I was a lot more analytical and rather than someone who could have uh, memorized the dates and the events, which is why, which is, this was the only specific reasons. Uh, however, if somebody's strength is history and they should definitely go for it. History is very scoring. And if I had picked European history, it would have really facilitated me in the interview process as well. Okay, so what is your uh, language of communication at home? Language of communication at home, my parents speak Sindhi with each other. And even with me and my brother, even though uh, I my butcher the pronunciations in Sindhi, so uh, we speak Urdu and we speak English as well. So the language of communication is uh, whatever we're being communicated in, we're going to respond in the same. Um, and this brings me to another question. Why didn't you opt Sindhi? I didn't opt Sindhi because uh, I've gotten my primary, secondary and higher education from Islamabad. I've never studied Sindhi academically. Okay. So that was the reason why I didn't go for Sindhi. Sindhi is a rich language. It's, it has, I feel like, I think it has one of the largest collections of alphabets. And it's very, very technical, which is why if I had picked Sindhi, I, I think I would have spent a year studying just Sindhi. 
So I went for subjects that I would be able to cover in a small amount of time. I knew I had my strength in it and I knew I had an aptitude for it, which is why I didn't pick Sindhi. Acha Sara, tell me about your time management, especially during the exams. In the exams, I had this technique laid out that I would look at the MCQ paper, I would scan it and I would solve it in 10 minutes. MCQ usually requires you to solve it in 30 minutes, but I would only spend 10 minutes solving that paper, uh, that part. And then the rest of the 20 minutes I would, I would spend on studying the questions that were in the subjective part. I would allocate five minutes to each question and then I would go to the back of the exam. I would draft a very, uh, I would draft a strategy, an outline for every single question. For instance, um, in my international relations paper, I solved the MCQ part in just 10 minutes. And then I turned the dirt turn to the subjective part, looked at the questions, gave each question five minutes of strategizing. And I, and when the part, when the time for MCQ ends, I would already have solved my MCQ and I would already have read the entire paper holistically and I would have already planned what I'm going to write in the next two and a half hours. So time management during the exam is something that I feel like is a make or break. Because if you don't manage your time properly, what happens is that you spend six pages on your first paper on your first question, and you would spend uh, three pages on your last question just because of poor time management. So time, every question deserves its own 35 minutes, deserves its own five minutes of strategizing, and that is what sets you apart from a sea and from a pool of aspirants who are not managing their time properly during the exam. Okay, same goes for stress management because I believe uh, six of your papers uh, are taken in the first three days of your exams. Yes. So how did you manage stress? Yes, we had exams every single day, uh, two exams every single day. And uh, as far as stress is concerned, it's very normal to be stressed out in this entire process. It's very normal to be anxious. And I feel like that should be normalized to talk about the, uh, the fact that everyone is stressed. Um, Stress is something that you can tackle uh, while in, during the exam by, by reaching to the exam center on time at least 30 minutes so that you can skim and scan the entire environment around you, first of all. Number two, during those breaks that we have between exams, I would go back home because uh, my house was uh, near the center. So I would go back home or I would either spend my time in the car. Because I, what happens is that when you interact with other aspirants, you get more stressed out. Do not discuss your exam after the exam has ended. Move on to the next part. So these two hours are very intricate. I feel like you should eat, you should drink water, you should, uh, if possible, do breathing exercises, do a little bit of 10 minute yoga, and these little techniques go a long, long way. So stress is very normal, but you have to manage it in order to succeed. Okay, Sarah, so what was your technique? So uh, did you prefer group study or individual study? Group study has its own strength. However, I didn't study in a group. I studied by myself uh, in my own room. And I and the reason for that is because I feel like everybody has a different study technique. And you have to know your strengths and how you study and how you flourish uh, while you're studying. Some people rely on other people, for instance, uh, to teach them. I would rely on the internet. I would rely on the te on my teachers. Uh, I would make sure that the time I'm spending is by myself. And it's solely because of the reason why I feel like uh, I think I can study better alone. This it, That's just it. Because everybody has a different study method and every study method has its pros and cons. For instance, uh, because I was studying alone, uh, I might, uh, sometimes I would make a mistake and there would be no one to correct me. And then I would have to go back over and over again. That's a little bit of, uh, but then I would be able to focus properly on my time. I had to, I had the freedom of uh, picking my own hours to study. I had the freedom of um, studying uh, as much as I wanted or as little as I wanted, depending on the day. So I personally opted for the self uh, the studying alone method
Okay, so you have uh, chosen gender studies yes. uh, in your optional subject. So you have never read that before. Yes. So when choosing those uh, subjects, specifically the gender studies subject, what was the idea in your mind? I thought that gender studies would revolve around uh, women problems, women's uh, problems for solutions regarding women. However, gender studies is not women's studies. It's, it takes a holistic view of the word gender. Gender is different from biological sex because gender means, uh, gender is a social construct, male, female. Uh, and when we talk about gender, we have to talk about the third gender as well, which is the hermaphrodite community, the transgender community of Pakistan, which is highly neglected, specifically in our senses and in our daily lives. We, we don't really rec recognize them now, do we? So when I came into gender, uh, it was subject obviously very close to my heart and it is to every woman and every man, every trans person in the, in our society. Everybody has something to say when it comes to gender or feminism. However, in order to un really understand the subject, I feel like you have to do it justice by studying it, which is why I could just sit here and make remarks that Pakistan doesn't give ample opportunities to women. I could just sit here and say these big, big statements uh, that women are oppressed and blah, blah, blah. But I have to back them up. I have to back them up by a theoretical aspect. I have to study the historic evolution of gender studies in Pakistan because Pakistani women have have been fighting this war for a very long time and it's high time now that all of us study this subject, all of us understand what it truly means to study this subject and we give it the justice and the space that it deserves. It's a beautiful subject. It's for everyone who has a comment uh, on whether women deserve rights or not, whether the trans community deserves rights or not. So it's an interesting subject and that's why I picked it. And I genuinely enjoyed my time studying this subject. I feel like now I have a lot, uh, I have a better grasp on social problems. Whenever I look at it, I see it from a gender perspective, a gender sensitive perspective, and I feel like everyone should. Okay, so what is your message for the aspirants in general and uh, our students in specific? Uh, I have these I have two uh, messages. The first one is academic and the second one would be non-academic. So for the academic message, I would say that um, plan accordingly. Please make uh, a plan, for instance, a yearly plan, a monthly plan, a weekly plan, a daily plan. Uh, plan as much as you can in this process because a lot of people come into it without proper planning and then one day they're studying this subject then they're studying this subject you have 12 subjects to cover and uh, they should all be properly given time they should all be properly given attention and that's how you would excel in the exam this is the academic part of the advice and as far as the non-academic part of the advice is concerned I would say that when you start preparing for CSS, a lot of people have a lot of interesting things to say. And it's good to take criticism. Criticism is always constructive, but criticism for the sake of criticism is something that, uh, that destroys you from within, specifically during your preparation, which is why um, there's this beautiful speech by Theodore Roosevelt, and he it's called The Man in the Arena. So, in that speech, he says, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of the deed could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred with blood, sweat, and tears, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows the triumph of high achievement, and at worst, if he fails, he will never be among those cold, timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. So I will end my note Thank without you so saying much. anything because whatever you have said is sufficient for uh, all the aspirants for this program and for the interview session. It was a wonderful time with Thank you. Thank you. Thank you God so much. God bless you. I had and a lot good of luck fun. with your future. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you very much.